That is just insane. Can upgrading your AR make you a faster shooter? Spoiler alert. The answer is yes, but let's talk about what parts you need in order to do it. So a little bit of context behind this here. I watched a video from a fellow YouTuber recently named Nick, who you all probably know as PewView. Legit like the fastest shooter on the internet. And recently he came out with a video giving away his secret sauce recipe as to how he shoots so smooth and so fast. In the video, he goes over all you need is three main components to swap out on your AR in order to shoot faster or smoother like he does. So like many of you out there, I let the intrusive thoughts take over and I immediately jumped on brownells.com, ordered all the parts he recommended, and and built out a new AR to shoot fast and smooth, just like PewView does. If you're looking to do the same thing, head over to Brownells, like I said, use code 1STSHOT10, that'll save you some money in the cart and help support the channel and make you a faster shooter. Once I got all the parts in from Brownells and got them all loaded up on my rifle, the results were pretty astounding. So for those of you who don't know, the AR-15 is a super cool platform and can actually be tuned in order to perform better. In a sense, an AR-15 is kind of similar to a guitar. For example, a guitar you can buy it from the store or pull it out of a box. It's got strings on it. You can strum them. It'll make noise, but you can then tune the strings to make it sound better or tune it to different keys in order to play different songs that you want to. So a guitar and an AR-15 are kind of the same in the sense where you can get it right out of the box or from the factory. It's gonna work right away, AKA it's gonna shoot and function, but you can then tune your rifle by swapping out a couple parts in order to make it perform better. So for tuning this specific rifle that we're using in this video, we want it to run fast. In the words of Bob Lee Swagger, slow is smooth and smooth is fast, which I 100% agree with, but we're gonna get rid of the word slow at the beginning, so we're just gonna say smooth is fast. That being said, how do we build a smooth AR in order to go fast? Again, according to Nick over at PewView, we only need three things. All right, so the first part recommended is a trigger, but not just any trigger, it is recommended to get a Geisley SD3G trigger, and that's exactly Exactly what I put on this setup. The Geisley SD3G trigger is actually one used by a lot of competitive shooters in order to shoot super fast. Out of the box, it comes with a four and a half pound trigger pull, but it comes with springs to swap out on the trigger in order to make that a two and a half pound trigger pull, which honestly is insane. In a good way though. To compare this, I have a Foxtrot Mike's FM9 AR9 here with a mil spec trigger in it. And using this trigger gauge, let's actually see what a mil spec trigger these days comes out to for the pull weight. All right, seven and a half pounds, yikes. Now let's see what the Geisley trigger has. Oh wow, right at two and a half pounds. That's insane. <laughs> so the super light trigger pull is definitely one of the reasons why this trigger is recommended, but the other reason is because it has a positive reset. So positive reset is after you fire the first round here and you go to reset the trigger now. So I'm starting to let off with my finger, starting to let up, it already clicked and it's reset. What happened there was the trigger actually pushed my finger a bit to get back to that reset position in order for me to then pull the trigger and fire the next round. So it's almost like a cheat code that resets the trigger quicker in order for you to fire the next round. On a mil spec trigger, it does not give you much support to push your finger back to reset. And sometimes it's honestly a little gritty where it'll get caught and then kind of catch forward and then you can shoot again. Super slow super fast. So that positive trigger reset is huge in order to run a fast setup. All right, so we got our trigger in the gun. The next thing on our list that we need is a JP Enterprises silent captured buffer spring. Now there's a couple different options on the market of ones you can get. The one specifically I picked up here is a H2 buffer weight for this setup. The reason I chose an H2 buffer weight for my JP Enterprise silent capture spring is because I'm running a Daniel Defense upper here. Typically speaking, these Daniel Defense uppers are over gassed and require a heavier buffer in order to have a better ejection pattern and overall be tuned to run smoother. But again, there's a bunch of different options, but I chose the H2 because that's what works best for this setup. So what is a silent captured buffer spring? Well, if you've ever seen one of these before, it's basically gonna replace that. The idea behind this, again, is trying to make a smoother gun because smooth is fast. Getting rid of all the slop and the spring and even the noise 
and reducing it down to using this guy is gonna help create a smoother operating system and again, create a faster gun. So let's go ahead and put this guy in. All right, the third and final part that PewView recommends here is a muzzle brake. Brian, that's not a muzzle brake. Yeah, I know. So this is where I went a little bit rogue. A muzzle brake can definitely help keep your gun flat and smooth shooting, but I have quite a few suppressors and I love running my gun suppressed. So I chose this can specifically instead of a muzzle device to still have a fast operating gun. Let me explain why this can works the best for this. So this is the Huxworks Flow 762 Ti. There's two reasons why this is the best can for running on a super fast setup like this. One is the Ti in the name stands for titanium, which means this is super lightweight, barely adds any weight to the front of the gun, which is nice. The other reason is because this is a flow through can. On a traditional baffle styled suppressor, what happens is all that gas gets redirected back into the operating system, which can cause gas to go in the operator's face as well as cause more wear on the parts in the system. We don't want that if we wanna run super fast and smooth. So we use the Huxworks Flow can here where all that gas actually gets redirected out the front of the gun. So there's no gas in the shooter's face as well as back into the operating system. So all that can run smoothly. Overall, Huxworks suppressor, pretty cool and helps us run a super fast setup still. All right, so building out the rifle using these three parts and listening to PewView, did it work? Are we a faster shooter now? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're faster. Out on the range, I could clearly tell a difference with this gun and how it was set up and it was wicked fast. And super smooth. Again, smooth and fast coincide with each other. So having a smooth gun, you could just tell this thing wanted to run and it was fast. I was honestly blown away. Also comparing it to some of my other setups I had, even an AK as well as a different AR, I could clearly tell on the shot timer, time-wise, this gun was faster. And again, overall feel, recoil management, the smooth operating of this setup, it was like night and day difference. Like I'm blown away. One important thing though to note, going back to our guitar analogy here, guitar and AR-15s being very similar. For the guitar, you can pull it out of the box. It has strings. You can strum it. It's going to make noise. It works. You can then tune that guitar to the right key you want to play the right songs that you're looking to do so. But the only way to master those songs on guitar is to practice. Same concept applies here with this. We can buy our gun out of the box, it's gonna work. We can add these parts, tune it, so that way it's perfectly set up for speed. But the only way to get better then is to practice with your rifle setup. Another thing you can do to try and shoot faster or at least get your finger trained to shoot faster, and I oftentimes do this a lot, is when I'm sitting at a desk or even driving in the car, is counting in my head like a build drill, counting to six, and getting my finger to move as I count. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, counting to 10, doing different increments, trying to get that trigger finger faster. So that way, when you do hit the range, you can apply that principle and hopefully you're gonna shoot faster with your tuned rifle. So practice, 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 practice. Oh, and one last super helpful, important thing here. If this was helpful, make sure and hit the thumbs up button and we'll see you in the next video.